All right, so we're going to talk about what it means for a function to be continuous at a point. And in pre-algebra, you probably learned that if you, you know, if you can draw the graph without lifting your pencil up off the paper, the function is continuous. But there's a lot more to it than that. And at this level um, in calculus, we're going to get into the nitty gritty details about what it means for a function to be continuous. We have three functions here. You can see that the function on the left has a hole in the graph. So it's pretty obvious that that function has a discontinuity in it at x equals 1. This middle function also has a hole in the graph. It looks very similar to the first function. But we also see that g of 1 is actually defined here. But the graph itself would still be considered uh, discontinuous. And we're going to tell you why through a definition. And then we see in this third graph, in this third graph, we have a smooth and continuous function that... Um, well, it's continuous, right? There is no hole in the graph. There is no jump. Um, so what what's the definition behind all these? Well, the definition has three parts to it. And if you're going to prove or disprove continuity, you have to show very specifically all three parts to this definition. So let's break these down into smaller segments. A function is continuous at x equals a provided that the function is defined at x equals a. Okay, let's just start with that one. In this first graph, f of 1 does not exist. I shouldn't even say that. f of 1 is undefined. So f of 1, because it is undefined at x equals a, right there, I can say it doesn't meet the first criteria of the definition. This function discontinuous. But look at this second graph. In the second graph, let me get my laser pointer. In the second graph, we can see that g of 1 is defined. g of 1 is equal to 2. So the first part of our definition is, is checkmarked here. And then in this third graph, h of 1 is equal to 3. So right now, by the definition, these two functions are continuous so far. Let's look at the second part of the definition. The function has a limit as x approaches a. Okay, well, we don't have to look at this first function because we've already disproved um, continuity there through the, first, um, uh, through the first criteria. But look at the second function. Does this have a limit as x approaches 1? The answer is yes, it does. Because as I approach 1 from the left, I'm getting a value of 3. As I approach 1 from the right, I'm getting a value of 3. So the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is equal to 3. Check. The first two criteria, so far, this function is continuous. Let's look at our third function. Does the limit as x approaches 1 of h of x exist? The answer is yes, for the same reasons that we said for g. So again, by the first two criteria of of definition of continuity, these two graphs right now are continuous. So let's go to that third point, and perhaps the most important one out of all three, and that is the limit as x approaches a of the function has to equal the output of the function itself. And that's where this middle graph fails. Because even though it has a limit as x approaches 1, and that limit happens to be 3, g of 3 sorry, g of 1 happens to be 2. And so the third criteria fails, where the limit as x approaches 1 is 3, has a value of 3, but g of 1 happens to be 2. 3 does not equal 2. Therefore, we have a discontinuity at x equals 1. But if you look at this third graph, now the limit as x approaches 1 is equal to 3, h of 1 is equal to 3, therefore all three criteria are met, and we can say that h is continuous at x equals 1. Remember, it's being continuous at a point, not being continuous over an entire domain. So this definition of continuity, extremely, extremely important. You have to remember that it has three parts. You got to verify or show all three parts in order to say that a function is continuous. You can't say, well, just look at the graph, it's obvious. Okay. Now, um, remember that when we're calculating limits, if, if we have a polynomial function, right, which has no restrictions in it whatsoever, there's no domain restrictions, then when I'm taking the limit as x approaches 2 of p of x, I can very easily just plug 2 
in for x, that's our cheat, because I have no restrictions on this. So I can say 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 3. I just plug 2 into the function itself. I get an output of 3. So the limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 3. And there are continuous functions that we have looked at all throughout uh, our history of mathematics. All polynomial functions are considered continuous. Now, a polynomial function would be like those functions that look like roller coasters, right? They have a bunch of hills and valleys. Those are continuous by nature. Um, exponential functions, when something is growing exponentially or it's decreasing exponentially, those functions are continuous. The sine and cosine functions, which we haven't seen for a while, but you know that it's that wave-like function, the sine and cosine, those wave-like functions are continuous by nature. So we've studied a lot of continuous functions, but as you're going to see, there are many functions that have a discontinuity as well, and it's going to be up to you to prove that discontinuity by using these three parts of the definition, three parts that you have to use.